So today I'm using a powerful approach called live stacking. Now live stacking resolves details inside distant deep sky objects in real time or as real time as the camera can see it. So in this video, we're gonna run through my approach to live stacking. And then we're gonna use this small airline portable telescope. We're gonna resolve details inside a star forming region in our neighboring galaxy. And then I'm gonna swing you across the other part of the sky. And then we're gonna look at my favorite galaxy in the Southern sky. So live stacking is where we use an astronomy camera in the telescope. We're going to capture a series of images, one on top of the other, and the software will automatically stack them so that the signal will build up, the signal strength will build up as the images stack. And of course the noise, the graininess will average out. So in a matter of minutes, we'll get this wonderful view from the camera on the laptop screen. So I've got everything set up here. I've got the telescope set up. We've got the mounts, we're all powered up. So this is my airline portable travel telescope. I've got my second hand Megray 90 telescope that fits in my carry-on suitcase that I take into the aircraft with me, the AM3 harmonic mount. And the beauty of the harmonic mount is it doesn't need any counterweights, which of course for traveling for airline portable is fantastic. That sits on top of a carbon fiber tripod, a lightweight carbon fiber tripod. And then I have the pier and that just helps keep the telescope clear of the tripod legs. And in terms of software, the brains of the outfit is SharpCap, SharpCap Pro that does the plate solving and the live stacking. And then I use Stellarium as my control planetarium software. And I'll talk you all through this as we go. So my apologies, the site generator has just kicked in. So we've got lots of background diesel noise. So hopefully you can still hear me okay. What we're gonna do now is do our polar alignment. I've roughly polar aligned. And the key point here is that the AM3 mountain doesn't have a site, it doesn't have a polar scope to line up on. So we're gonna to have to do it with the software. So that's not a problem because SharkCap does have a polar alignment capability. So let's boot everything up now. So I'm just logging onto the scopes Wi-Fi now. I'm gonna use my ASI mount to connect to the mount. So this is what's controlling the telescope, how it's pointing. I'm then gonna boot up SharpCap. That's what we use to control the camera. And then let's get Stellarium up as well. I'm just checking that we're polar aligned. I'm going to slew across to the star Akamar and I'll use the little finder scope. That's why we can't see anything through the camera. It does help if you take, it really does help if you take the dust cap off first. So, where are we? Oh, we're way off. I'm going to put the Batnoff mask, the focusing mask, on the front. This is just a homemade 3D printed one. And I've got to make sure that the focus is exactly in the centre. So I'm making sure that diffraction pattern that's coming through the focusing mark on the screen, we've got those bands, it looks like a butterfly, making sure they're all exactly central. Excellent. A bit like the dust cap, you've also got to remember, take off your focusing mask afterwards, otherwise you'll wonder why all your pictures are pretty rubbish. So we're roughly, very crudely polar aligned, just to lining up the telescope with an object. I'm just going to go back to the home position. So while the telescope slews in, we're roughly, very crudely polar aligned and we know we're focused, the next thing we need to do is do our precise polar alignment. So we've got some stars appearing now. 
So this is what we're going to do now. We're going to go tools, polar align. So Shark Cup gives you the instructions when you start. I can skip over that. I've set it to Southern Hemisphere. Obviously, you've got to set it for your right hemisphere. Uh, I've left all that on the default. So now we will press next. I've got to grab the hand controller, which is there. Do a 90 degree rotation. And it's basically comparing the star pattern when we were slewed looking at the South Pole, rotated around the axis, and then it's comparing the star pattern again and working out what those differences are. So I am 41, what's that, 41, nearly 42 arc minutes off. So let me press next. So I'm within a degree and I've got to go right a little bit and down a little bit. Now this is the fiddly bit. Just move you out of the way. So the back of the mount, we're going to adjust these controls and get that so we have an excellent polar alignment. So let's do the right first. So if I could get my head around this, if I want it right, I adjust the left hand control. Get that down as close to zero, zero, zero as we can. And I watch this like a hawk and I always overshoot. Right, so I've got to come down a little bit as well. So let's I've got an excellent polar alignment. I'm within a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a degree. So I would say that's pretty much good. We're not going to get much better than that, particularly with the wind picking up a little bit now. Cool, so we are polar aligned. We've done our focus. So right, let's go and find some interesting deep sky objects. So let's go to Stellarium. What should we go for first? I know what we're going to go for first. she goes and this is what I love about this this is all integrated it's all together Here I am sitting under the southern skies right let's jump back to sharp cap and our excellent polar alignment so I also make sure that my hot and cold pixels remove press this button here we press this button here it checks the star field from the camera with what's in its own internal map and works out to where its areas is, 1.42 degrees. So that's now corrected for any misalignment. It's now in the centre of the field of view. We've got this beautiful southern galaxy. I think a 20 second exposure, I'll put the, put the gain down to half. Then we'll press a live stack. <laughs> So the first frame always looks pretty rubbish and what we're going to do is the software is going to stack, automatically stack frame on top of frame on top of frame and that's going to average out the noise, the noise will sort of randomly flutter around so that will average out, that will sum out and of course the signal gets stacked one on top of the other. So over a period of about 10-20 minutes we get this beautiful image of this galaxy and this is with a telescope that fits in the airline overhead luggage compartment I can resolve details inside of the spiral arms of this galaxy. So unbelievably it's actually gone a little bit chillier. I've had to put my fleece on now but we're looking up at NGC 1365, this beautiful barred spiral galaxy. And I'm reading online, it's about 56 million light years away from the Earth, and it's got this wonderful central bar, and those sort of spirally curved sort of scimitar arms off there. And what's really interesting is the amount of detail that's visible inside the galaxy. We've got that bright central bar, the sort of clumps and the H2 region sort of indicate this is a really active star forming region. Now I'm too lazy to do flats, I'm too lazy to do darks, 
but I do suggest clicking on the remove hot and cold pixels that seems to get rid of those wandering little pixels uh, the electronic noise that creeps into the image and the other thing is down on the histogram at the bottom you can then move the sliders around that adjusts that image I go slightly to the left of the peak that's where I put the black point and then I adjust the central slider roughly to where the image looks right but click on the zoom button and click on the zoom icon and you get much finer control to bring out all the faint details all the hidden details inside this beautiful galaxy right so what we're going to go and do now is we're going to swing across from uh Eridanus, where we're looking now is it Eridanus or fornax so what we're going to do now is we're going to swing away from this bright galaxy we're going to go across there to the large magellanic cloud now that's actually a galaxy it's a satellite galaxy of the milky way I simply cannot see it from back home in the UK. You can only see it when you come down further south, down into the southern hemisphere. Now, inside the large Magellanic Cloud is a huge H2 star forming region called the Tarantula Nebula. And when I look through the big scope, when I look at it through the big scope, you can see the spirals and the arms all coming off it. It does actually look a little bit like a tarantula. So what we'll do is we'll do some live stacking. We'll swing the camera across and then get the camera on the Tarantula Nebula. Right, let's go then to NGC 2070. Go to. Oh, this is so exciting. Now the Tarantula Nebula is like a hundred times further away than the Orion Nebula, yet they're broadly of the same brightness. So that means if you brought the Tarantula Nebula, you know, in to where the Orion Nebula is, it would therefore be nearly 30 degrees across in the sky and it would shine at about magnitude minus 10, so nearly as bright as the full moon. This complex is huge and it's only because it's not in our own Milky Way, it's actually in our neighbouring galaxy in the Magellanic Cloud, that it's not so bright. It's an absolutely stunning sight, one of my favourite finds uh, of this Namibia trip. I've spent countless hours using the big scope, using the C11, putting my bino viewer in, and it's astonishing that it's even a hundred times further away than the Orion Nebula, yet broadly it's the same brightness. Right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you enjoyed seeing my favourite southern deep sky objects. My thanks once again to the Patreons, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video as we explore the night sky.